Hello and welcome to today's Business Skills webcast, The Creative Thinking Sandpit. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I'm from Redback Conferencing. Today we're joined by John Pastorelli and we're going to discuss this sandpit which a lot of people have been talking about recently and I think a key challenge for business in this world is to maintain relevance within an increasing complex world. So creative thinking is a major key in enabling businesses to differentiate, create options and alternatives that will improve economic return. So without any further ado I'd like to welcome our presenter for today. John, how are you? I'm well, Sarah, yourself? Great, thanks yeah. for having you here. Oh. Oh, no, it's great. Great to be here. Great. Lovely to be here. So, first of all, um, you've launched a book, and this is where it's all come about, and it's all unfolded, and it's um, yet to be launched. It's mm -hmm. probably a week or two away. Yep, it's not That's too far right. away. Um, so, what was your motivation to write a book on creative thinking? Where did it all begin? Ooh, I could probably say as a kid. I yeah. Love, you know, I've always loved creative thinking. I've always had an enthusiasm around creative thinking. Uh, yep. As a kid, you know, we used to build uh, push bikes, we used to build surfboards, etc., and... As I, I, I carry that enthusiasm through, and I believe it's something that's a, it's an essential skill uh, within business today. And I, I, I believe it's an essential skill from a, a process perspective in terms mm. of being able to create uh, things that are easier or faster or more efficient. We're always looking to create options to improve our current situation, mm. and that's where creative thinking has a has a role to play. But I also think that creative thinking. Is a it's just a innate essence within mm. us as people. We love creating. Yep. We love having an aspiration and then creating a pathway to achieve that aspiration. I think we get a bit yeah. of a buzz out of that. So um, th there's a few, and I guess the other one that I'm quite passionate about at the moment is that I, I believe we as individuals and also business have a responsibility to really enrich and enhance our creative thinking skills because we we're living in a world where things are changing the, the way they are changing as we all know it's, it's it's a rapid change but I think it's something that we need to embrace we need to then be able to adapt to to be nimble in uh, a phrase that I like to, to refer to as thinking on your feet is the new desk work mm -hmm. and that element of then business empowering us to to be in that space then I guess minimizes the risk that we might become a bit obsolete yep. when the you know, as we've got this roboticized that we roboticized yeah. world coming and systemized and technology enhanced etc we need to be able to be still relevant in that world so there are a yeah, few reasons. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's really good reasons, actually. <laughs> um, so you just touched on the word skill, and mm. I'm interested because I've always had this thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, that creativity is something that you're maybe born with. It's something, you know, we usually associate with a lot of artists or people within um, more communication sort of fields. Like if you're mm. an accountant, can you learn to be creative or does everyone have it in them or is it a skill that we learn? I just want to set the scene there. I think I, my, my firm belief, and after many, many, many sessions facilitating creative thinking workshops and programs, everyone is creative, mm -hmm. everyone. Some people might be, might have a bit more of an, an innate or innate uh, ability around creative thinking, yep. yet you know, I, I guess the example that I like to, to refer to now and again is that uh, I've got some friends who are single parents, mm. and to me, they're quite creative. If you follow them, you track those people mm. over a week and what they get up to to manage their time and competing of priorities in that week, they're, yep. they're quite creative. But they might step back and go, well, I'm not creative, and they yeah. step into a session and they go, I'm not creative. And it's like, well, actually, once you start to look at that, you are. And, and so I believe everyone is creative. And whether it's a skill, it is a skill in terms of a, it's, it's a process you could apply to a particular mm. situation, but I think it's also something that is an innate kind of quality within us. And I'm thinking of my two young kids, and, and they're quite creative, uh, yep. and they've been quite creative from an early age. Mm. And I think kids get, they love that thing, they step into... And actually, just on that, there was some research that was conducted that they, they actually tracked some people over 40 years, and they measured their... their various rates or the various levels of intelligence and they 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 started around the the age of four and they they tracked this at about 100 percent they thought at, at that age it was about 96 98 percent capacity within these these different intelligences that they were yep. measuring by the time they got into their teens and then eventually they got into their 40s that intelligence had gone down to about four percent wow so the other 96 percent where is it it's still there mm. we just need, we to, need access to work it. on it yeah, yeah exactly absolutely. so it's, st it's still there yeah. absolutely so there you go everyone that's a great way to start a <laughs> webcast because it means everyone can stay online and everyone <laughs> is going to learn something today yeah. so let's get straight into it okay what you know speaking of kids what is this mm. creative thinking sandpit yes how does it all work 
The, yeah, the sandpit is a... Um, the best way to describe it is a safe, practical, purposeful and playful mm -hmm. space. Okay. And, and it's a space that... It, it's come about when I was running a lot of uh, um, uh, creative thinking sessions and creative thinking programs, what I was finding is, getting back to what you were mentioning before about are we all creative or mm. is it only a select few? And what I was finding is that everyone is creative in their own way. What we needed was a, a space that people could almost step into... Yep and take some certain principles and some certain techniques with them into that space and then realise that creativity that they had. Mm. And so that, that space, if you like, became the creative thinking sandpit. And what worked for me, what, what I believe were the key elements that, that help people um, realise that creative thinking talent is the, the sense of playfulness. Mm -hmm. Get in there, just have it a go, give it a crack, as we like to say. Uh, language of yes and is, yep. is another language or another phrase that we like to, to work with. There's a sense of also purpose that it's very easy to create ideas. Yep. And given that uh, within a, a business context we need to have ideas that add value, then there needs to be a sense of purpose around the, yep. the creative thinking sample as well. And it needs to be practical. It needs to be something that you can then take away and then start to apply. So... And I think the other one that I mentioned there about safety is probably the key. Mm. People need to feel safe. Yep. And once they feel safe, they're willing to explore and they're willing to, to have a bit of fun and, 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 and really enjoy the process. And that's why the sandpit, because it just seemed to work for people in terms of letting go of some of those myths that we yes. talked about and stepping into this, this place of possibility. Yeah. So that's where Very it's come from. Very yes. interesting. And so how is this different from this parking bay? What's that all about? Well, the parking bay element, that's, that's part, of, part of the sandpit. Because okay. one of the things with the sandpit is that we honour all contributions. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things is that when, if, if I'm in a, let's say I'm in a traditional brainstorming session mm. where I've been in quite a few times, and, and I might put up my hand and go, look, I've got this great idea. And someone goes, well, and it's an idea that is almost negative. Yep then what can happen is you can go, oh, look, look, we're in a positive space, we're in a creative space, let's just, let's just oh, forget about that, yep. let's stay positive. And what we in the sandpit go, well, that's sensational, let's work with that. And then we park that, we don't okay. dismiss it, we park it, because there's a number of techniques in the sandpit that actually bring those back into play, because what we do with the sandpit, it's very resourceful, as we'll see a bit yeah. later. It has to be... We're spending time in there. We're creating ideas. We need to be resourceful around the ideas that we create. Mm. And so if someone puts up an idea, one is we need to honour that because they've made a contribution. And I believe the best way to honour that in that in that creative context is let's park it and let's see how we can use it later on. Mm. So it's not a question of let's dismiss it or it's wrong. It's more a question of not quite useful just yet, mm. but we might make it useful later on. So in the work that you do then, because that really just um, resonated with me and I think a lot of us and even people who have registered to join today, throughout the registration process a lot of it is, OK, you're in this environment, you have those people and automatically we don't know how to react. So we do maybe act a little bit submiss um, dismissive to those ideas and afterwards, after the session's over, it's like, oh, God, did I just make that person feel like crap because yeah, I didn't take exactly. on their ideas? So yeah. I think yeah. um, what's, you know, in your experience, is this something that we all struggle with? and we can all be better at? I Yes, I believe yes. Mm. And even outside of the creativity domain is the... Uh, if I answer that with a, with a slight, yeah, slight tangent in that whenever we're in a situation where we might feel that we're threatened or it might be a bit of angsty, a mm. bit, bit of a frustrated space or someone feels like they might be coming at us and maybe uh, um, having, a, having a go, if you like... What tends to happen is we can become a bit defensive yes. and I believe then that starts to compromise our ability to understand. And Stephen Covey, I mean, you know, the late Stephen Covey mentioned that about the thing about let's seek to understand first. Mm. And that essence of creative thinking and the essence of working with questions really helps us get a, a greater understanding there. Mm. So rather than become defensive and what I call positional, let's just go, well, well, let's relax a bit and find out where this person's coming from. Let's ask questions. Yep. And likewise, then pulling back to the, the sandpit, 
and the idea about someone proposing an idea, then rather than just going, oh, look, let's dismiss that, let's just go, well, how can we work with that? Mm. What else can we do? What other way can we frame or what other way can we then look at a perspective of that particular idea mm. that might be useful? And so that that essence of momentum, that, uh, that essence of creating journey for a yep. particular situation is what's so important, I think, not just in creative thinking, but I think in everyday life. Well, as yeah, well. you could use, apply that to so many different yeah, situations, exactly. couldn't you? Yeah. And if anyone does have any questions just on the sandpit um, before we go into the next section, or any questions, maybe um, situations that you've experienced recently, feel free to type in the chat box and we'll get back to them. Um, so that seems like one different aspect of brainstorming mm -hmm. that people aren't familiar with. So yeah. how else is this creative thinking sandpit different from a traditional brainstorming session? Uh, there's there's a, 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 a slide at the moment that uh, we're looking at the, the comfort stretch and stress zone and yeah. the if we overlay the sandpit onto that particular slide, for me the sandpit is almost that stretch zone yep. and we what we're doing with the, the sandpit versus a brainstorming session is that we are deliberately looking at creating a space. We are deliberately looking at um, taking with us certain principles. We are being more resourceful, i.e. we are not dismissing any ideas. Mm -hmm. We're looking to bring them into the process. And I believe with, uh, with brainstorming sessions that I've been involved in is that we don't spend as much time on the initial desired outcome. What do we want mm. from this? And so we, we actually go into that stretch zone much earlier with the, with the creative thinking sandpit yep. versus a traditional brainstorming session. And one of the things we often do with, 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 uh, with, with creative thinking sessions, go, okay, what do we want from this? What's our desired outcome? And someone might go, well, we want to increase productivity. Mm. And then we'll say, okay, well, let's create three other statements around that. Yeah. So it's three other statements around um, what that means for you, and it's like so we've got the we want to create uh, we want to increase productivity. Then there's well, statement number two, statement number three, statement number four, and just by doing that, suddenly we go well actually hang on, I think four is closer to the mark. Mm. So we're already thinking in that creative space before we actually start addressing the particular scenario, mm. if you like. So, and that's something that uh, with creative thinking and the creative thinking sandpit is that also it's a it's a, I guess, a philosophy that we like to take outside of that particular domain, let's say, yep. working towards this increasing uh, productivity or increasing motivation within staff, whatever that particular focus area is. And we like to take that and apply that in other parts of what we do. Mm. So whereas brainstorming is sometimes seen as just uh, project-based or just issue-based, the sandpit tends to have a bit more of a journey beyond. Yeah. It's like an attitude. And I can't tell you how many sessions I've been in where we're brainstorming or just having a meeting for meeting's sake <laughs> and you walk out and it's like, what did I actually get from that? And it's actually... So in terms of takeaways, and I think it's good just to give people online some actionable takeaways, yeah. would you recommend having... Um, I feel like a lot of people have meetings. OK, let's have a meeting, let's talk about that, let's brainstorm that. Having less of those and putting time aside for these creative thinking sandpits, maybe on a weekly or fortnightly basis as an organisation, yes. do you think they need to happen less often but they're bigger sessions? I guess it depends on yeah. the, exactly what you just said yeah. there, Sarah. Sometimes there's a meeting for meeting's sake that some people... That's the way they think. Yeah. They think in that meeting mode. And sometimes they're extremely useful. Mm. Sometimes the efficiency can be can be increased. And, yes, I, I believe you can layer a meeting with a, a creative thinking sandpit framework yep. or a particular attitude around that. And what you just mentioned there, Sarah, is so important in that uh, we spend time at the start in terms of what do we want from mm. this meeting or what do we want from this session then we generate some ideas and some ways forward. But then at the end, it's really important to check in yes. and check back. And, and what you mentioned, what are the takeaways? What did we get from this? What are we going to do from this point on? What are we going to commit to? How are we going to be accountable? How are we going to actually measure and evaluate yes. from this point on? So what you mentioned there is so important in, a, well, I think it's not just in creative thinking, but I mm. think in projects and, and team meetings as well. Yeah. So um, as... 
um, an organisation or as someone running these meetings or, as you know, it's my idea, OK, everyone, this is something we're going to implement next year. I bring people in. You're obviously not going to have everyone on board. Mm -hmm. Am I right? What about those people who are reluctant to maybe get involved or they aren't talking to one another? And we can't all be facilitators mm -hmm. and encourage that. So mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your thoughts around, you know, bringing in um, traditional um, these sand pits mm -hmm. and then having people who aren't really on board with them? How do you get people, how do you get the buy-in? I, there's, a, there's a number of ways there. There's, I spend time with people individually and what's important to them. Yep. And a sense of why are they there, what can they contribute. There's, depending on the session too, is I, I'm, f some of the questions I ask at the start of a session are quite important. Mm. And if I'm getting a sense that people need a bit more of a, a, a motivational surge, if like a motivational nudge yep. to be involved, then I'll frame the questions around that. And, but I think it's really a question of getting to know why those people are there. And also, sometimes the people are shut down for a whole range of reasons. Yeah. It could be because they feel they're not creative. It could be because they feel they can't contribute or maybe they're a little bit uh, scared or a little bit uh, anxious because yeah. they, might be, they might have their boss there and say, well, I've got to put on my, my most appropriate face or most appropriate behaviour. And... The thing when we're, and that's what I like about the sandpit, is that we're, we've got an accepted norm when we go into mm. the sandpit of, of a way of behaving and a way of actually undertaking the activity. And so that helps relax people in terms of if they might not necessarily buy into the process. And sometimes also people just might not want to participate. Mm. And so with the, the sandpit, there's, we, we actually do both individual and group-based techniques. So there's individual-based techniques where people actually are involved on an individual basis mm -hmm. that are quite easy, they can contribute ideas, and then they get fed into the main group session. Yep. And that often elicits buyback from those people and encourages that... Sorry, buyback, buy-in. Uh, encourages that, that, uh, that involvement as well mm. because they go, oh, that was my idea, and they're taking that now and they're using it. Oh, that's sensational. Yeah. yeah. And potentially that might not have happened if they didn't have that opportunity to contribute initially first mm -hmm. and then that become part of the group process. Yeah. yeah so just a little, quick little story. When I was yeah. doing some work up I in Queensland, I was it. up in regional Queensland and I, I walked into this, it was a shed, it was, oh, geez, it would have been about high 30s, low 40s, it was quite hot. Yeah. It was a corrugated shed and I was running a session up there in remote Queensland and I had nine blokes, bearded blokes, like this. <laughs> Come on, monkey. Yeah, it's, Give I, us I, your best. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's, I, just, I walked in, I had these nine guys looking at me going, you know, just like, mm, you know, yeah. come on, and just like this. And it was just the that essence of touching base, what's of value to them? Mm. Why? How can I make this valuable to them and of relevance to them? And, mate, we end up having this great barbecue at lunchtime. Really, That's yeah. sensational. Sometimes and, you just got to ask people, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's getting yeah. back to that thing we mentioned before. It's just... Let me un try and understand where these people are coming from mm. and find out, and then how do I tailor what I've got to make it relevant for them mm. so it's of value to them. So that's being creative in exactly. itself, isn't it? it Trying is. to figure out people. Yeah. It's almost like a psychological thing that you yeah. need to tap into. Yeah, so true. Okay, so um, what about principles, key principles of the sandpit? All right, so the... And I think this is where... Um, when you mentioned before about the the um, people taking this and applying yep. it, some of these principles, just by applying the principles, you can actually engage in a, an increased level of creative thinking. Mm -hmm. So one of the principles that I, I like to, to um, and I buy by, is uh, the idea about continuous learning. Uh, it's it's shared, a, shared out there a fair bit about ongoing learning and lifelong learning and life-wide learning yeah. and life-deep learning and this essence about learning. And, and um, a good mate of mine, Andrew Hoare, he captured this in this uh, particular uh, slide at the moment. In Got creative that, mates. <laughs> yeah, but it's, and it's just like, because this essence of Leonardo da Vinci, he was always learning. The greats yeah. always learnt. They continually learnt and stretched, and I think that's us as a human species. We like to look and grow and, and look at things and how can we change the current situation, yeah. and Leonardo was a great example of that. So I think that essence of continually learning continuously stepping into that stretch zone that I mentioned before. Mm. And because in the comfort zone, you're going, you, you, basically the comfort zone is you're, you, you, you're doing what you've always done, so thereby you'll get what you've always got yep. is the comfort pretty zone. Simple. Yeah, it's yep. pretty simple. The stretch zone, though, is that essence of where we can start to, what else can I learn? What mm. else can I try? How else can I do this? And that's where the essence of safety comes into play and yep. allowing yourself to do that. 
And the other thing I forgot to mention before, Sarah, was the uh, the stretch, the, the stress zone, that red zone. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we manage people into the stretch zone, but then there's what I call that line in the sand where you just don't want to push people too far that they potentially could be harmed. Mm. Yeah? And it's, it's never happened because I think we're quite respectful when we do go into that stretch zone and we respect people, we respect the feedback, we respect where people are at. Yep. Um, and so the learning, it takes place in that stretch zone. That's, that's, that's where it is. So another principle as well with, um, uh, around the creative thinking sample is the, the essence of curiosity. Mm. And the Albert Einstein, another great thinker, and I love the quote that he says, you know, like it's, he's got no special talents. He's just passionate to, passionately mm. curious. And I think if we take anything from this essence of, of creative thinking is that encouragement to be curious, to, mm. to, to, to explore, to experiment. There's also that essence of another principle of, of just try and give it a go. And there's a, there's a movement within the business world, if yeah. you like, around, around uh, accepting failure yep. and not stigmatising failure. And there's a book just recently uh, published around that failure is a good option mm. because you, if, you, if you spend too long trying to get the project perfect, the market's just gone past. Yeah. So you need to get it into market. You need to get it in there and be nimble enough to adjust while it's mm. in market. And there's, a, there's a, a little quote that I like to work to. It says that rather than wait till 10 to 10 before you, or 10 out of 10 before your project is implemented, implement it so it gets to 10 out of 10. I remember the first time I heard something like that, and I think it was from my um, corporate coach. You know, sometimes 80% is good enough to launch, and I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> and it was almost like a week of just, like, mm. thinking, oh, God, and trying to, you know, be creative, thinking about how do I get around this problem because why would you do that and how does that work? <laughs> but then once you actually settle on it, it's such a beautiful idea. And mm. I think, like you said, this movement and the introduction of startup cultures and entrepreneurial yep. organisations, and yep. I feel like some of the big corporates or maybe really large give, um, government organisations who aren't that nimble and can't change that quickly, do you think they are going to get left behind if they don't sort of implement this sort of way of thinking? Well, uh, I, I just want to... Just one point. Yeah. The, I just... I just... I think it's contextual, this yeah. idea about the 80%, yeah. because I don't want a brain surgeon yeah. to work on that. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I... Just, just to kind of clarify... How do you know I'm not saving lives, John? <laughs> so, sometimes it's kind of contextual. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I think, and I think where they sometimes get left behind, if you're, if you're looking at some of these big organisations, is they, they get left behind in the motivation of their staff. Yeah. Because they are... They're a little bit bureaucratic, a little bit heavy, mm. uh, just a little bit slow, and the staff are wanting to get on with it. Yeah. And... And consequently, staff start to lose in motivation, they start to lose in buy-in, they start to... The latest survey of engagement, uh, people who engage in the workplace, is, I think it's around 30% mm. of people are actively engaged. And I think a number of those would probably be from some of those organisations because they, they're just finding it hard. Mm. And, and so I think that's where companies and organisations will start to lose that talent and they'll be, they'll be going on and looking elsewhere. Mm. So that's one of the areas that they might be, yeah. might be suffering from. And then, but then from the other side, from a management perspective, there's so many things that we need to be implementing now in order to make people happy. You know, this is... It's not an easy one to mm. implement, so how do you encourage change with this sort of behaviour in the workplace and get everyone, once again, on board, but from a more high level? I think one of, one of the key things with the, with the sandpit is, I mentioned before about that being a, a purposeful space mm. and purpose and meaning are becoming a much stronger and a much deeper motivator for people. What's, what are we about? And so Simon Sinek, who mm -hmm. wrote the, the book on why and has a lovely TED talk on why, and he talks about we've got to get to the our why. Yep. Yeah, and, and I think that same essence of why and purpose is what the sandpit encourages in, in, in what we do, in that we've got to touch base with that, that essence of, of meaning that we, as an individual, what matters to me, mm -hmm. that matters to you, that matters to someone else, that then matters to that entity, that yep. then that matters to the market we're in. Having that alignment is, I think, really key mm -hmm. um, to, that, to that aspect of, of working with creative thinking and so being creative in how we actually understand those different layers that we have, yeah. the different perspectives that we have, and then picking the one that goes, oh, that one there seems to marry with that one, that one, and so 
based on that, we have this this unity mm. that then marries into this other aspect. And we need to encourage ourselves, getting back to Albert Einstein's about the curiosity, we need to have that so that we can find out about those different perspectives, the different layers, the different essences that we have, that we can bring them together and, and unify. And, yeah, it can be quite challenging. Mm. You know, I've, I've managed... I remember managing a, a team going way back uh, when I was at Bridge Climb, when I was part of the start-up team for the Bridge Climb over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Mm -hmm. And, and pulling that team together for the, the original launch there. And some of those guys were... There was such a mix of people. Mm. They, they're just an amazing mix of the original climb leaders, and yet they gave their absolute all mm. to, that, to, that, uh, to that enterprise and because they were all driven by that common purpose. Yeah. They wanted to create this every climber, every climb experience on the bridge. And that, regardless of where they came from, that united them. And then once they... You know, not moved on, but once they kind of went away from that role and they mm. were up the road and they were at a party, then obviously there's other elements of themselves that came out as well. So I think, you know, that's that's one of the important things with creative thinking and that mindset around creative thinking is yeah. finding out more about what's going on, yeah? And I think, you know, like one of the things, I just wanted to, to share a another element yep. in that that kind of relates to this and that is that Sometimes we look for the shiny object, yes. or sometimes we look for the gem, mm. or sometimes we look for that, uh, that first impression. And, like, if I was to ask people to, to, to read those numbers, you know, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 3 equals 4, 2 plus 3 equals 6, 3 plus 4 equals 7, what generally happens is I go, what do you notice about that? And most people, 90%, would go, oh, 2 plus 3 doesn't equal 6, it equals mm. 5. Yeah. And it's like straight away that's where the focus is yeah. versus there's so much more there that could draw our attention. And so sometimes, using that same principle, sometimes it's the shiny object that mm. draws us. But we need to go beyond that. We need to find out what else is available beyond that and create more ideas or look at other perspectives to, 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 to find out a greater depth and greater opportunity. Yeah. Now I'm uh, trying to figure out what else is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I just, while I you're doing just that, because <laughs> while you're doing that, I'll just this is the, this is, uh, to, to extend on that is uh, this estimate the, the the mind map. Most people are aware of um, Tony Bazan's work around mind maps, where yep. you, you have a central idea in the middle and then different ideas off the edge. Yep. With uh, the creative thinking sandpit, what we're looking at doing is we we create that um, that initial idea and then we nominate a number generally between four and six, and we have to create that number of ideas around that middle circle. So in this one with motivation, we've got the four initial ideas, rewards, team, individual and intrinsic. Yep. And then off one of those, we then create another four, mm -hmm. and then another four, another four, another four. So for, for this uh, particular slide, I've just left up there that intrinsic has social, family, purpose and development. So... Let's say this was based around how do we increase the motivation of our teams yep. or motivation around teams in the workplace. Then those initial four ideas and then another four ideas around intrinsic, individual, team and rewards. And then what we do is we can then create another four off that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, now where this kind of relates back to that essence of the shiny object and also um, working and being more resourceful with the, the sandpit is that... I put all this work into this. I create this this uh, particular, let's say, a particular way forward in terms of how to increase the motivation for staff in the yep. workplace based on this mind map. And then Sarah walks in a month later and goes, John, we need some ideas around service designs. And I go, sensational. So all I do now is I go back to that mind map, I cross out motivation, and I put mm. surface, uh, service designs in there. And suddenly what I've got available to me is all those different provocative perspectives that mm. are kind of... I need to look at now service designs from an individual perspective, intrinsic, team, rewards. And so I'm being quite resourceful in that I can now use what I've used before in a different yeah. context, but also then I could also create my own little mind map around service designs as well. I've got choice. And the but thing... But you've still got that context there, Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can play yeah. around with it. And that's the thing about... We what we do with creative thinking around that um, around that essence of, of, of going going beyond what we initially create, um, and this is one simple example for that. Excellent.
Mm. And there's more about, in your book, do you go deeper into this yeah, sort of sure thing? Do. Yeah, sure do. Just a quick note as well for everyone online, for those of you interested in finding uh, more out about John's book and when it's actually coming and when everyone mm. can get a hand on it, um, there's a survey, um, if you just click on next to the tab in the PowerPoint presentation, and just pop your details in there and we'll make sure you get a copy. And also give us some feedback as well because we love that. Mm. Um, so one thing I also want to touch on... Um, Obviously, we need to see the value from a business perspective yep. um, and we need to see the ROI. How is this going to help us besides making employees more engaged? What is the benefit to an organisation by implementing this sort of feedback or um, framework or changing their ways? Well, there's there's a, a, a few different ways. One is one is around the, the improved in collaboration, mm -hmm. so people actually coming together and working in a more collaborative space uh, and thereby contributing. And from that, there's also some of the other values associated with that is that relaxation of people owning an idea mm -hmm. because then it becomes a collaborative idea. So yep. that feeds into that motivational space. There is also that essence of creating... And I'll, I'll touch on design thinking mm. here because that's where creative thinking is starting to... Well, it has got a very strong role to play in design thinking because design thinking is where we tend to be a bit more focused on the aspiration versus the problem. You know, you've got these two motivators. You've got a pull and a push. So what we're trying to do is we've, we're, we're being drawn towards or pulled towards a certain aspiration. How can we create something that has more value for a particular customer? What are the customer's needs at the moment? What are their desires? And then how do we create something for that space? Mm. And if you look at that from an example of the, the classic is obviously the, the iPhone that came in and disrupted the whole um, marketplace. And the thing there is that from a creative thinking perspective and a value perspective is that... The iPhone, to me, the iPhone's not a phone. It's not a phone. Mm. It's, a, it's a, an entertainment hub. It's a communication hub. It's a, it's a resource hub. It's, it's the, all these things. And so if I, whilst I'm in the frame of thinking of a phone as a phone, I'm somewhat restricted. Yep. But as soon as you think in a creative sense from a, a user perspective or from a, a context of usability or how it's going to be then served out to a particular audience... And what the value is around that, what potentially some of the emotive kind of responses might be to that, mm -hmm. then then we start to think more away from the functionality of that particular object or more for, away from that yeah. kind of essence of the object and, and to what it can do. And so then that, I guess this kind of steps into the whole branding aspect of, of products. And, and so the iPhone then, I think why that did so well was because the whole that disruption to the marketplace that suddenly wasn't a phone anymore. Mm. It was all these other things. It was convenient to have everything there. So it was almost like this, uh, like a convenience phone, like a sea phone, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's where the creative thinking process helps add value. So it brings people together. It gets them creating in a, in a way that has greater relevance for the marketplace. And I think in these days, um, you know, ideas, you know, I, I mean, even the accounts you mentioned before, people think accountants are fairly kind of um, mm. logical, which they are, and they're, they're systematic, etc. But I've met some accountants who are so creative, yeah. so incredibly creative, because they're trying to think about how, potentially, for their own processes, how they could help out with... Uh, improving the efficiencies around that process, but they also need to think on the behalf of the client and they need to help the client. So they need to be creative in terms of helping the client be creative and mm. work around issues. So the value of creativity isn't just in what we do in our process, but it's in the interactions and the relationships yeah. we have with other people and how we can help them as well. So there's a, there's a, there's a whole range of, mm. of different value Yeah, different sets benefit. That, and I sets. think... If I'm just, I'm just trying to summarise this in my head, would it be accurate to say that, you know, if innovation is the outcome and what we want to achieve, then creative thinking is the how we get there? Yeah, that'd be a good way of saying it. Sometimes. Yeah, I just yeah. feel there's a lot of people and innovation has become quite a buzzword mm. and that's what they want to achieve and, they, you know, you know we're, we're innovators and we're doing this and we're disruptive and we're doing this, but they don't actually have those creative frameworks in place. Can they get there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. and that's, I think that's the, the, that's the element around... Because the innovation, sometimes that people are a bit scared by, yeah. by that. They go, oh, oh, it's a big process. Yeah. And, and it depends. Because innovation, like implementing a, an innovative project that, uh, let's say, someone within an organisation has a, a new inter in a innovative way of facilitating um, lunchtime discussions, mm. just for say, you know, because I know tea rooms and those 
collaborative spaces now are, are quite are quite popular. So how do they facilitate that discussion? How do they create some form of focus around those discussions? That to me would be innovative. Yep. Because they're doing something that adds value to a particular context. And creative thinking, as you say, would be a way to, to get to that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Hmm. Okay, so just moving forward now, one of the final questions is um, facilitation. So hmm. I understand you do this for a living, which hmm. is why you're talking to us and why it sounds fantastic. How can um, all the rest of us, what are the keys to facilitating these sessions? Because like we touched on earlier, when you do have people in the room who may not be as willing to be forthright or they may not want to collaborate as much as others, what are the keys to facilitating sessions using this framework? I, uh, the, the principles we spoke about, like, so uh, the important thing is that essence of creating, whether it's a real space, like some mm. people have what they call a hot room or an ideas room that you step into and there's coloured paper and pens and music and yeah. generally a sense of creativity. Yep. Then there's uh, some people just, they, they might do a creative thinking sandpit around a particular lunchroom table. That might be their creative thinking sandpit. So however it is that you set the space up, being clear around that space, have that cooperation around that space and the buy-in around that space that you're working within that space and then adopting those principles that we do accept all, all contributions, mm. we do encourage, uh, we do have that yes and language, uh, we have that sense of playfulness. I think the important thing around um, around the creative thinking sandpit as well is the, the essence of the language of uh, right and wrong. We, we don't use right and wrong per mm. se because sometimes there's a negative connotation. If I put an idea out there and someone goes, oh, that's wrong, it's like, oh, oh, oh yeah, it yeah. affects our self-esteem. And it's like it's useful and not yet useful. So we tend to work around, around that, um, those principles. And if I, just a quick little mm. um, example where of how the creative thinking sandpit was used for a product development was the... And this kind of brings these principles into play. Yep. So we had a creative thinking session. Session. The particular company was a manufacturing company for out, outdoor goods and recreational goods, and they, they wanted a new product line. So we're trying to think of some new product lines. So, OK, into the sandpit we went, knowing that in the sandpit, with the yes and language, etc. any of the, the yes buts, we just park those, those blocks, we call them, in those parking bay. And and then we went the one of the ways to provoke people because what we need to do is not just create many ideas. Alongside that, we also need to create different ideas because yep. it's easy to create a lot. It's, it's the different ones. Mm. And so to do that, we use provocative techniques. And one of these was let's create the most useless ideas possible, absolutely most useless. And they came up with things like um, mosquito netting for submarines, ashtrays on motorbikes, etc., waterproof tea bags. One of those they came up with was shirts, kids' clothing that actually dissolves in the sun when it hits UV light and doesn't just dissolve, it actually burns their skin. And we thought, well, that's pretty useless. <laughs> so we chose that as the most useless... It's quite sadistic. I know, well, it's, yeah, but it's in the sandpit. It's an idea. And it's in yeah. the sandpit. We're allowed to do that. And, and we went, right, that's your most useless. Now flip it. How can you create something useful out of that? Mm. This, 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 this clothing that dissolves and burns kids' skin. And what they came up with then, they used the yes and technique. They went, right, yes and... It's clothing that dissolves. Yes, and what about if it's something else that um, it changes colour? Yes, and like a shirt that changes colour. Yes, and well, versus a shirt, maybe it's something wearable. Yes, and a uh, wearable object that might be something that uh, comes on and off when they're in the sun. Yes, and and then through that process, they come up with a, um, a sun alert bracelet that after mm. 20 minutes it changes colour when exposed to UV light as a reminder that you're getting burnt. Wow. Because sometimes, and mainly it was for kids, because a reminder for parents, but if you go down the beach sometimes, you're there, you, 20 minutes sometimes goes quite quickly yeah. and you don't realise you're actually getting burnt yes. in that time. And so the Sun Alert bracelet, and now on the market, there's quite a few of them. There's Aside quite a few of them out there. The kids. Yes, the kids. Yeah. And, yeah, the, and, and the, yes, the burning, the burning dissolving shirt never made it onto market. That's right. Like that. <laughs> Have you ever had a creative thinking sandpit in a sandpit? Have I? Yes, I have. Yeah. And I've had it on the beach and I've had it, um, I do a lot of work yep. with, uh, yes, exactly where we are now. Um, I've had it, uh, I, I do a lot of work with um, Australian Aboriginal peoples and communities, yeah. so in remote areas. I remember this one time we had Red Earth and we were, we were, our sandpit was the Red Earth and we are on the Red Earth in, in, um, out in the, the middle of um, Australia. So. Get people out. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've run it in so many places. Scenery. And look, some people use the sandpit even um, on the train. I mean, I use it. On the train, I commute a lot by public transport. 
the sandpit for me is it's almost that mindset, that attitude that I can take with me wherever I go. Mm. That's going to be my the quote for mm. this. Uh, the sandpit <laughs> is my frame of mind. It's <laughs> my mindset. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. That brings us to the end. We don't have any more questions coming through, but mm. I'd like to thank you um, for joining us today. Thank I'd you, also Sam. like to encourage everyone out there to complete the survey to provide us with your feedback and to also provide your details so we can let you know of the book that's actually going to be launched shortly. And, John, your details are also on there as yep. well, so you're more than happy for people to contact you. Yes, and I've got a, I've yep. got a oh, free... Oh, yes, and. Oh, yes, and. <laughs> I've got a free... Uh, I've got an online course coming up yep. and online through Unity and and I was, if that's okay to offer people yeah, free for if they if they send details through yep. yourself then I'll send you through the code and they can go online for free Why and not? also I was, I was going to when the book is launched yep. those same people um, I was also if they're interested um, send them through a uh, copy, uh, copy of the book. Oh, I uh, might put my name down. Yeah so <laughs> I'll, I'll see I'll see how many people are interested but if yep. there's like a dozen odd people or so yep. then I'll happily send those out and if not maybe I'll distribute it amongst it but definitely mm. look to provide some value for Excellent. people for thank coming you. on board and joining us. Well I'm feeling much more creative now so thank you it's been a very very informative uh, what 40 minutes so mm. good to time. Um, final words to anyone else out there? Uh, I think just get out there and feel the sand between your toes and have some fun and 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 you're never too... It's, I think we'd always do it. Mm. I mean, you mentioned kids before. I started with kids. I might finish with kids. Yep. Uh, I've got two young kids, five and six, and we, about every third night, we do made-up stories. Mm. So we're in, we go into the bedroom, and rather than read stories for that particular night, it's a made-up story. And I ask them, what do you want the story to be about? And Chase will come up with a particular topic, Jasmine with another one, and then we create a made-up story. And now where Chase is now writing his own stories at six, like, um, mm. and then Jazz is drawing her own stories because she loves art. Mm. So she's drawing her own stories. And I think so the creativity that's in us, I think, from a child. Mm. Picasso once said that, you know, like, uh, we all start off as childs, but it's uh, how to hold on to that child in our heart mm. because I think that's where that playfulness and that sense of um, having fun around creative thinking is, yeah. is where it's at. Excellent. So it's who we are as people. So. Great words of advice. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you at future events. Bye for now.